Robert Bresson's A Man Escaped, Un Condamné à Mort Se Échappé, illustrates how a variety of sound techniques can function throughout an entire film. The story takes place in France in 1943. Fontaine, a resistance fighter arrested by the Germans, has been put in prison and condemned to die. But while awaiting his execution, he works at an escape plan, loosening the boards of his cell door and making ropes. Just as he is ready to put his plan in action, a boy named Just is put into his cell. Deciding to trust that Just is not a spy, Fontaine reveals his plan to him, and they are both able to escape. Throughout the film, sound has many important functions. As in all of his films, Bresson emphasizes the soundtrack, rightly believing that sound may be just as cinematic as images. At certain points in A Man Escaped, Bresson even lets his sound technique dominate the image. Throughout the film, we are compelled to listen. Indeed, Bresson is one of a handful of directors who create a complete interplay between sound and image. Il était là. Je suis resté jusqu'au soir à lui communiquer le chant des bataillonnaires dont il m'avait demandé le refrain. C'était si surveillé depuis huit jours que nous avions perdu contact. A key factor in guiding our perception of the action is the commentary spoken over by Fontaine himself. The voiceover is non-simultaneous, since it occurs at a time later than the images. But it could be either internal or external sound, since we never learn whether Fontaine is thinking back over these events or recounting them to someone. Fontaine's narration has several functions. The commentary helps clarify the action, since certain temporal cues suggest how long Fantane spends in prison. As we see him working at his escape plan, his voiceover tells us, one month of patient work and my door opened. At other points, he gives us additional indications of time. His commentary is particularly important during the final escape scene, where hours of action occupy only 15 minutes of viewing time and the narration is narrowly limited to what Fontaine could know. Fontaine's voice calmly tells us of his and Jost's patient, cautious progress toward freedom. Le temps passé, nos chances diminuaient. We receive other vital information through the commentary. Sometimes the narration simply states facts that the pin Fontaine obtains came from a woman's wing of the prison, or that certain prison officials' quarters were at various places in the building. More strikingly, Fontaine often tells what his thoughts had been. After being beaten and put in his first cell, he wipes the blood from his face and lies down. On the track, we hear his voice say, I'd have preferred a quick death. Often the actor does not register such thoughts visually. At some points, the voiceover commentary even corrects an impression given by the image. After Fontaine has been sentenced to death, he is led back to his cell and flings himself down on the bed. We might take him to be crying, but the commentary says, I laughed hysterically. It helped. Thus, the commentary adds a degree of depth to the film's narration by allowing us glimpses into Fontaine's mental states.